Hello everyone, Master Xeon 101 here, and in this video we'll be talking about the update changes that have happened in HardOps 987 underscore 17, all the way up to HardOps 987 underscore 18. For the most part, our work has been focused mainly on bug fixes and refining our existing systems to a fine point where they're no longer throwing errors, but also getting a new level of dice added in the form of dice 2D. So when we first added the ability to dice with view, users immediately requested the ability to be able to dice in accordance with rotation. And so that's finally been added. However, diced view is a completely different system. So the simple idea of just adding rotation need to be approached in a way that was congruent with the actual system at hand. So instead of going into the minutia of why it wasn't possible immediately, we can now come back and say that it is definitely a thing. And I can't be more proud of all the work that's gone into NICE because the topo topological implications just haven't yet been even scratched upon, but they will with time as we continue to test and refine and improve upon these updates that you're being presented with today. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So whenever it comes to sub D and presenting it in the viewport, I'm a big fan of going under the viewport overlays and turning off 3D cursor, outline selected, extras grid floor grid x and y origins and then from here i'm actually able to look at the model in the viewport and still look at the wireframe press alt v and look at it without the wireframe and it's pretty straightforward so previously in 2.79 we had an option called simplify that would basically simplify the ui and just remove the items that were irrelevant so that way you could do the same thing so after going in and doing it about a hundred times over the course of the recent content it became apparent that it's a lot easier to be able to just press alt v and choose simplify so now just letting users know that simplify is an option in the event you want to just get rid of elements in the 3d view that are not needed for the process of presentation and then from there you can quickly take your screenshots or whatever is needed whenever you press q you can go under mesh tools and activate dice v2 and if you press v you activate view dice and if you press v again you activate line dice and whenever you click we see that we can see the implied lines happening on the mesh we can also hold alt in order to rotate we release alt in order to go back to translating it right now i'm in perspective view which is causing it to give me a little bit of an irregular type drawing but basically line dice in a nutshell this is all it does so here we have this blocky shape that has a few cuts put in it and if we press alt v and we activate wireframe we can see that when it comes to the bevel modifier that the mesh is receiving a bit of unneeded torsion and distortion happening with the surface just causing it to evaluate a little roughly let us look at it from top view press numpad 5 to go in orthographic we'll press q mesh tools bring up dice press vv and we'll just perform a few cuts and we see that similar to knife box and box cutter we're able to quickly just mitigate this and its relationship with the bevel in order to get a much better relationship when it comes to the bevel modifier in a previous update we introduced view dice where basically you could press q go under mesh tools activate dice press v and have a dice according to your view for this mesh it's being mirrored so that's why you're seeing it only affect this lower quadrant but the idea behind view dice is it's supposed to always encompass the area that you have selected because it's a different type of dice than the previous systems that we use the 3d systems still have their place in fact view dice isn't capable of dealing with multiple objects so while this seems like a shortcoming it is something that we can live with in lieu of the benefits that we receive with the ability to control it in fact just its existence is a very accomplishment unto itself because when the plans were made for it i wasn't exactly sure if it could actually exist so here we're in edit mode we have the single face selected i'll press q and we'll go to dice v2 and we'll press v twice and just jump over to view dice and the thing is is while we're able to roll the wheel we're also now able to press r and we see that while we're pressing r that the dice will still attempt to get itself to fit the selection at hand which is an accomplishment unto itself but it's something that's just it's fantastic to see of course we can also press tab and maybe even press r to stop rotating and even jump out of box lies and give ourselves individual segment counts for particular areas. For example, I may want lesser segments going on the X than I do on the Y. And then once we click, we have now cut this into the surface. Some optimizations have also been had to make it behave better with subdivision. So it's not as slow whenever you have a subdivision mod present. So there was some benefits with testing and these recent updates whenever it comes to subdivision with all the work that I was putting in with subdivision not too long ago and, and still am because it takes a moment for me to uh, shift disciplines. But just like that, we were able to dice this area in and from here just go in and just topologically begin getting it to fit more adequately. So it still isn't a complete solution as far as topological 
topological replacement, but it's definitely a starting point for where we want to go when it comes to dealing with topology and just some of these repetitive J maneuvers that have to be done on straight planes across areas. To further showcase why view dice is something unlike we've never seen before, let's press Q and we'll go under mesh tools and use sphere cast in order to convert this box into a sphere. Let's control A, visual geometry to mesh. I'm just going to select this point right on the front. Looks like I wasn't even looking at the front. And we'll press control numpad plus to grow it a little bit. And let's press Q, go under dice, press V in order to bring up dice. And if we press D, we can activate dissolve, which you can see in the help. And basically if we click, we see that we've now replaced this entire area with what we've diced in. And so when it comes to topological replacement, I haven't begun to even scratch the surface as far as what this unlocks for us when it comes to controlling topology on a surface to be able to replace an entire swath of geometry with something that's completely planar and user controlled. I mean, we could still go in here and press R. We could press D to activate it. Once we click, we have now redirected this whole area while still keeping the form. So dissolving is still very new and highly experimental. So more than off, more likely than not, you will experience issues with it, depending on what you're trying. But in, in the cases where it does work, its worth is immediately apparent and definitely shows the level of quality that ST3 has put into this. You know, a lot of discussions and arguments were had over dice and the directions that it could go and the way that it should go. And, you know, even when it came to the topic of adding in line dice, it was a hot topic because, you know, my first op my first opinion was, you know, dice doesn't actually need to have just a line. But as I've used it more and more and we added the ability to snap in points and snap to other points, it's become more apparent that this will definitely become a mainstay and have a use far beyond even my current understanding of it. So I feel that, you know, just more time testing it and spending time just getting acquainted with it, you'll unlock potential uses for it, even in your own workflow. But with that, we can move on to the next section. Hops and also the next box cutter will support multiple scene support. So here we are in just our regular scene that we start off in. I'm just going to duplicate this cube, select both of them, Q difference, and we've set up our first Boolean. Let us press the plus on this and choose to make a new scene. So now we're in scene 001. We're just going to shift A, add a cube, and let's just shift D, duplicate this cube, and we'll perform a difference. Let's also duplicate it over here, perform another difference, shift D, duplicate it again, and we'll create yet another difference in this shape. And we can press Q, go through Everscroll, and begin scrolling through the modifiers or the booleans on this. And we can see that we're able to scroll through them, and there's not much problem there. So let us just click on New and make a new scene again. Let us uh, Shift A, add our cube. But this time, let's move it to a proper collection, because right now it's just sitting nowhere. So we'll just call it Call. And now we have our collection. So let us just do the same thing that we did as before. And I'm just demonstrating that if you're working with multiple scenes, you will no longer have issues whenever it comes to dealing with the scrolling or collection recalling or any of that. We see that now that this is set up proper, we have all of our cutters in the right collection. However, if we were to just deal with them not being in a collection, it gets a little bit more weird in the outliner. So that is just something that comes with the territory. But just letting users know that if you're working with multiple scenes, it's now supported across hard ops and box cutter. Here we are over in Blender 3.0. So with this version of Blender, they actually changed the way that Knife Project works. So to demonstrate it in action with just general Blender knowledge, we're just going to bring our plane in front and let's also use our Q menu to just change it to be a wireframe just for visual clarity. And let's also press Alt V and enable wireframe. So that way we can see what our result is. So basically if you select your shape, you can tab into edit mode. From there, you can select your shape from the outliner that you wish to knife project with. And then if you go to mesh and choose knife project, we see that we have performed the knife project operation. And using F9, we can activate cut through where we cut all the way through to mesh. And that's how knife project actually works now. So this actually broke the way that knife worked with us, but I'm just letting users know that it's now been corrected. So if we just duplicate our plane over here like so, select our target, select our cutter, and we just shift click on knife, we can actually use knife project. Let's actually select that in the right order. And we can see that we've now cut into this mesh. So we just move it over, shift click knife again. We've performed another knife project. Just letting users know that knife project is now back to working inside of Blender 3.0 because it was previously broke for a little bit. And I even filed a bug report saying, hey, what happened with knife? And they kindly informed me that I was using knife wrong. So, you know, sometimes it happens. You just got to reread the manual and just reacquaint yourself with the new features and how they are being used now.